feeds are working and everyone is there and oh, up there and running. So let me make sure that I can see you guys and you can see me and all that good stuff. So there we go. I can see myself on YouTube. There we are. Uh, or on Facebook here. Let's make sure that we've got our YouTube feed up and running. Let's see here. Making sure we've got that going on. There we go. I can see me. I can see you. There we are. I can see, there's Nancy. Said hi. Hi, Nancy. How are you? Alrighty. We're all set to go. Yay. Okay. Um, great. We're good. And everyone's on. All right. We're jumping on. Okay. Well, welcome. It's Wednesday and you guys, you guys, it's all about earrings. If you know me, and I think you do, uh, you know that I love a big statement earring. And so I'll tell you a little bit about how this kind of design came uh, came up, but I'm really excited to share it with you. And if you've never done brick stitch, or you've never done seed beads, don't worry. You know, I'm not a seed beater. I'm a wire worker, I'm a metal worker, but I'm a secret seed beater too. I love the seed beads. And this stitch is super, super easy and I'm gonna walk you through it. I'm um, a big shout out, I saw my mom on. Hi mama, how are you? And I wanted to say a special happy birthday. It's my pop's birthday, not today, it's tomorrow. So the two dads in my life, my father-in-law and my father, um, both have the same birthday. Isn't that funny? On May 2nd. So happy birthday to both of you out there. We love you and thanks for watching. Um, so um, I've got my birthday greetings out and happy birthday to any, we know so many uh, people had a recent birthday. Our Faye uh, from our bead table and our design group just had a milestone birthday and Janice's birthday is coming up at the middle of the month. So there's so many birthdays, so many things going on. It's May, the birds, I can see the birds in the tree right out there. So uh, we've made it through and spring is really here. So happy May Day, happy uh, May 1st. Um, so it's great to have all y'all here. So let me tell you uh, a little bit. We've got Janice over on the uh, YouTube channel moderating over there. And I've got Gita across the miles moderating on our Facebook feed as beadshop.com. I know Emily might uh, jump in. I know that Kara had jumped in for a bit. Brandwin's behind the camera doing uh, some moderating and those camera angles as well. So as you guys know, it always takes a village here at beadshop.com to get this broadcast on. So it's great to have everybody here. Um, and Janice says, don't mention my birthday, it's coming up fast. Yes, Janice has a milestone milestone birthday this year too. Well, you know what? We are on the right side of the lawn, right? So that's whatever, however old you are, whatever birthday you're celebrating, as long as we're on this side of the grass, it's a good one, right? So, um, okay, so let's see. I am going to uh, tell you a little bit about the background of this project. So as you know, on our website, we have an earring called the Dancer Earring, and it was made by a former employee of ours, Linnea, who you guys know from the Pathways Cuff and stuff like that. It's really great. And I have always been enamored of these earrings in a big way. I've always loved them. And, um, and you guys can see it's also on our website at beadshop.com. And just as a reminder, for those of you who are new to us, you can jump over to beadshop.com anytime during the broadcast or after the broadcast. Everything that I use here today is listed over there under our projects and on our Facebook page. And you'll see it um, there and you'll see all of the list. So if you wanna jump in and grab all of these great products, you can, super easy. Um, so the dancer, I, I loved these and when I saw them on the website and I love the ingenious thing and we can actually, Brand, let's turn the camera around <coughs> so people can see my uh, bird's eye view okay. and then um, so they can see what I'm talking about as we go. So let me just bring that camera around over here. Do you want to lift this up? Oh, there we go. 
Okay, there we go. And then pull that there. Great. And then um, I'm going to grab is that good, good height there. There we go. Okay. So, um, like I was talking about a little earlier, is this straight? There we go. The camera likes to dip down a little bit because it's a little heavy. Actually, is that okay? I wanted it turned up. Oh, okay. This is actually what it Okay, this great. Like that. Great, great. So, um, so I've got the dancer earring right in front of me here. And this, what I loved about this earring, you guys, is that Linnea used, it's a clasp, uh, a loop from a toggle clasp. And we sell these loops separately as well. But was so, it was so cool because it had kind of this, uh, has this really cool um, decorative element to it, this little leaf element and a loop so it's very very easy <clears throat> to just attach an ear wire to it so this is a great base for you guys to start from right it's a really beautiful earring and they come i've got the bowl right here they come in a bunch of different flavors and you can just use <clears throat> a whole bunch of different uh, beads and make your own colorway which is awesome so then what we had was uh our bead table member danielle <clears throat> Pardon me. And Danielle Wicks, if you guys are a member of the bead table, you have seen some of her amazing things. She's also part of the beadshop.com design team. Okay. She um, kind of took the uh, inspiration from the dancer earring here and she added some other elements to it. What Danielle did was she used a smaller loop on the inside and then she stitched basically brick stitched in a similar pattern um, and then she added some tassel elements here at the bottom which I love and you can add some tassel elements I mean you could even add it to this right so if I've got this dancer earring here I can always add a little tassel to it, which would look great. Um, for this earring that Danielle is making, you could use a longer tassel. You know, we have these really cool kind of longer tassels that come in the package here, but you could also do a shorter tassel as well, if tassels are your thing, which are cool. And so I, I've, I loved both of these, and this handout here, the Stitch Tassel Earring, we'll link it in the episode notes, but it's also in the files section of our um, bead shop, bead table group. And I see Danielle has jumped on, and there she is, Danielle. I see you over there on YouTube. It's great to see you. And you guys, these are, don't be daunted, because I'm going to show you this in a moment this is the easiest thing and if you're just jumping into stitching it's no big deal N B D, you guys it's it's actually pretty simple um, and we're going to use Danielle's um, instructions to begin with so you can see how it's all written out so what I did was I went a little extra because I I don't know, because I, I wanted a fancy big earring, right? I wanted to just say, hey, you know, we want the, um, I don't know, I wanted a big statement earring, right, for summer and spring and whatever. So what I did was I took the element that Danielle did, this smaller element, and I enlarged it on our big hoop. So let me show you what I used, okay? Uh, let me uh, Let me grab... There they are. Get those up and out here. So what I used, and, and the recipe for you, you guys for this is super easy. So I used the medium hoop for the top and the mini hoop for the bottom. Now, you guys, if a Gigantor earring is not your jam, right? If it's not for you, that's okay. You can make 
I've got all these strings here because we're going to be stitching on these in a minute. But I've already started these guys up. You can see just that single, either of these single elements would be great on its own. And what I want to do, and this is just a sidebar and a side, but you know, when I get ready for this broadcast, I my wheels start spinning, right? Here is the satellite chain, okay? Wouldn't these just look great attached to a long dangly piece of chain? The earrings I'm wearing today are kind of that style. I love doing a long chain for an earring. Um, and so that, I think, would look marvelous, just as it is. And I've got some different colorways here that I'll show you, but I think hanging yeah, with the chain. Oh, do I? Sorry, let me move forward. Yeah, perfect. Is that better? Um, so you can stitch this to the bottom of a length of chain, right? And I, uh, I think it'll look just divine, divine. You can even stitch some little seed beads or something in here if you wanted. But I love the uh, satellite chain for this. I also, you guys, this is a chain that I think you guys, we always miss, or at least I forget about it. And I saw it this morning and I'm like, wait a minute, what the heck? So this is our trio chain. And I have another colorway here that I'm working with. And I'm gonna go over the recipe in just a second. But doing this colorway with the citrine briolettes and the gold, um, but and the gold one here. I mean, wouldn't that just be super gorge, right? I think it would be great and super opulent. You know, I have. I don't know if you guys follow fashion. I sort of follow fashion in a very loose way. But my favorite, and I love a red carpet. I know it's, sometimes it's a little, it's a little silly, but I love a red carpet, and my favorite red carpet is coming up. It's the Met Gala, is coming, and and I forget the theme. This year's theme is like, I don't know. I read it the other day, and now I can't remember. But it's like castle, or I don't know, something super opulent and ridiculous. But these earrings, I would wear these on the Met Gala. Met Gala shall I say, uh, red carpet. And it's coming up, I think it's today, it's May 1st usually the, the Met Gala is. So I'm gonna have to check out uh, the red carpet later. So um, anyway, so they're totally red carpet worthy, I think. Um, but let me continue to go over the ingredients lists that we've got here, all right? And it's super easy. All you need for this, and I'll pull this out in my um, in the colorway that I used here. And this one, um, I call it Mambo um, because, you know, I like the Mambo. I like a little ballroom dancing once in a while. And these kind of have a kind of a great uh, a flair. The theme. I knew Michelle. How did I know that you knew what the Met Gala? theme is. That's perfect. It's called Camp Fashion. I can't, I can't remember. I, I, I can't wait to see it. But again, you could make this both. Oh, is it next Monday, Tammy? I'm, I'm not sure. I have to, I don't even know what month it is. It is May 1st, right? And you guys are watching Facebook Live, right? I'll have to check my calendar. Um, but you could make these, as I said, on a pendant or an earring. So they're super, uh, they're super versatile, okay? So what I'm using, I used two of our medium hoops, okay? And in this particular one, I used the copper, but we also have them in antique gold, and we have them in, there it is all the way over there, thank you, friend, in the antique silver, these guys. And then I paired that guy with our mini hoop here. Mini hoop, mini hoop, and mini hoop. Now, we have other hoops on the website, and I was actually going to grab them before, um, and maybe um, we can grab them in a little bit. We have some other hoops, our wire-wrapped hoops. The ones that we did the boho earrings, where Emily did that drop earring, it's a drop hoop, and we have a round one also that's wire-wrapped. Those would be 
awesome. And we just have a brand, a brand, brand new, if you go to our Just In, um, and Brandon, maybe I'll kind of stay in okay. this area. Those, I know the, the skinny ones, and then those brand new ones, they're called um, Abiding. Okay, let's grab those, just right. for fun, okay. if you don't mind. And so, any of those hoops will work. Then, you guys, what you need is, you need an 11 aught. You need an 8 aught. Okay. You need some kind of 3 millimeter. This is a 3 millimeter fire polish, but on some of these, I've also used a 3 millimeter melon, will also work. Okay. And then you need some kind of cornerless cube. In this case, we used the hematite rose gold, but you could also use a little shadow. It just depends. Perfect. Thanks, Brian. Um, and then you're going to need a brio, a briolette, right? That's it. That's all she wrote. Um, so it's super easy. So you can just do your colorways that you like. I pulled some colorways that I thought were kind of cool. I did that this morning. And I very hastily, you guys, listed them on our blog. Our blog is called The Bead Table. And you can access it by just Googling The Bead Table blog. Put blog in there or else you'll get all kinds of like bead table um, like playing tables or pin tables or whatever. It's kind of funny. Um, or you can access it through our main website at beadshop.com, um, right there at the bottom of the page. These are uh, new loops that we have. These are called abiding, and they're big. See how much bigger they are? But if you're doing a pendant and it's kind of rough around the edges, I think um, this would be kind of a cool... Um, start for a more amorphous or a organic look of the brick stitch. And the brick stitch doesn't have to go all the way around either. You can just brick stitch back and forth like on the bottom and stuff here. You can see here how I've gone kind of back and forth with the dangly part there. So once you get familiar with the stitch, you're going to be um, in good shape. Um, we also have, these are those wrapped hoops. See how we've got them round and we've got them in a drop. And if you'll notice, you guys, in this earring, can you see how this hoop is kind of gigantor, kind of big, like this, right? You can see as I've started to stitch it here, it is kind of large in the center. But see on this finished earring, not only did I brick stitch out this way, but I started to brick stitch in this way as well. So if you want to take up some of the room, especially like on this big component, it's perfect for adding beads along the inside as well. Okay, so it just depends on what you what you want to do. Okay, but these hammered ones, yeah, these are in just in, and you know you guys loved. I'm going to take a moment <clears throat> if you are looking at our just in page. Um, we got this really sweet little. Um, spiral charm that we call good times well you guys loved it so much that we put it on the website and we had plenty we had a bunch you loved it so much that they went in and they went out we talked to our supplier and our supplier was all oh yeah no we don't have those anymore no one liked them well Janice with her convincing ways talked to our supplier and said please we've just launched it and we've just sold it out so if you're waiting for it, it's going to be back in about three or four weeks. Okay, so hang tight, and we'll have a good supply of them. But if you love that good times little spiral charm, it's so perfect for everything, we'll have it back in. So that's my little aside there. But these rings also, we just launched those abiding. And look, I just, they're really, they're just gorgeous. I love them, love them, love them. Um, okay, so I'm going to put these aside. Uh, and again, I'll just show you some of the alternate colorways that I did here, and then we'll jump on and get this ball rolling. So this, I'm naming these after the briolette that I used, okay? And again, these are all listed on the Bead Table blog, and Drea will put them in the episode notes too, okay? So this one is the Copper Turquoise uh, colorway, and you can see I've used Copper Turquoise um, brios, briolettes there. 
I've used the, um, I'll tell you, I think it's the um, Pacifica poppy seed melon in the three millimeter. I use the matte copper in the um, hematite cube. And then for the seed bead, I thought I'd pump it up a little bit. I used the 11-4481, which is the Duracoat Opaque Eucalyptus. And then I really wanted to add a little flash, a little flare. Whoops, if I can grab it. Um, I used the, um, the uh, Silver Lined Emerald AB, okay? So that's what's going on there, okay? Then I, I did a couple of others. This one's in the citrine. So I did the citrine. It's a little, can I get up that way maybe? I used the citrine brio. I used the melon again in the luster transparent gold smoky topaz. Matte metallic blue. And I saw Gita, I think you asked, is the matte metallic green ever gonna be back in? Um, yeah, I it will, I hope. Um, I hope it will, we've been waiting for it, but I have a good feeling that it's gonna be back in soon. Um, but put yourself on that list, the notification list for it, um, because those green ones would look, um, would look amazing with it. So these guys here, uh, the Duracoat Galvanized Champagne and then the Matte Metallic Gold ADOT for these. And you guys, I can see some, I can see some um, chat going on about, oh my gosh, you know, there's so many ideas and stuff. You know, think about this, and we talked a little bit about it on Friday, about thinking about beading as therapy. You know, we're just beading for the joy of beading, right? And so I want you to be guilt-free, you know? And, you know, if, if you don't have, um, you know, the budget to do, you know, a whole ton of bead shopping, you know what? I know you guys have a bead stash, right? Go to that bead stash, take a look, and see what you've got to use, right? Um, and, you know, and then as the time comes, you know, add to your stash. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no worry in that for sure. But think about your beading as therapy. I don't want you to feel guilty about taking your beading time for sure. So here, this one has a little glitz. This is perfect for the Met Gala right here. This is the pyrite colorway. So I've got the pyrite, briolettes, the three millimeter black diamond. This is um, the fire polish. I've got the shiny silver hematite. And then for the seed beads, I've got the 11-650, the gray silver lined alabaster that I seem to use all the flipping time. I don't know. I just, I go right to that. Um, I go right to that bead. And then this one is the... Um, uh, 4221, the Duracoat Galvanized Light Smoky Pewter, okay? And these Duracoats, you guys, are really durable, Duracoat. So they'll, even though they're covered, they're really, or plated kind of, um, they're really um, a, a great durable bead. Then this last one, I think, Ginger, I made this one for you. And of course we need doubles of this. I probably had doubles of the hoops, but I don't know what happened to them. Um, I used the Iolite Brio, and the Iolite that we have right now really is much more uh, tanzanite looking, and you guys know how I feel about tanzanite. I hope you feel the same way. Uh, so that's the Iolite Briolette, and then, you guys, I did um, this Polychrome Aqua Teal, right? Delicious already, okay? Then, wait for it, wait for it. I use the metallic iris in the hematite, right? Ginger, are you with me? Do you feel me? Then I use the metallic dark raspberry. And this one is the um, matte opaque cobalt luster. And I, I chose the copper to go with that, but I think the silver also looks good. I think all three colorways, I mean, you could pull it in any metal direction that you want it. But right, it's, yeah, I like, I don't know which one's my favorite. I 
Brandwin, I could not tell you, <laughs> but I lo I want to make all of these earrings. Okay, I want to make them all. I did like Ginger's, yes. <laughs> yeah, right? Yes, yes. Um, I love it all. So here it is. So these are the four alternate colorways that I used. And then, of course, I have this one with the, uh, the green garnet. So I used with this one, I used the green, or I'm sorry, green amethyst briolette. I used the hematite rose gold in two millimeter. I used the three millimeter snake fog um, fire polish, which I just love this kind of funky bead. You can see like the bead coming through the, the coating on it. I love it. The matte um, um, smoky amethyst AB. Um, the 11-142 FR, just a little bit of that purple in there. I used also the Duracoat Eucalyptus here. And then, so I used two different 11 aughts in this one. Um, so you could always choose a second 11 aught for all of these, but I just kept it to one to make it simple. And then <clears throat> I used, uh, what's this A dot here? It's the dyed rose bronze silver lined alabaster. So it all, I think it all works together pretty nicely. So just jump in, you guys, and, um, you know, find a couple. I mean, I could throw all of these now up in the air and catch them in a bin and kind of pick and choose. So, you know, whatever, whatever works. This is totally distracting me, though. <laughs> all of these shiny, <laughs> really gorgeous. I'm loving this silver. I don't know. I'm loving it all. I don't know. I think they look pretty good. So, um, all right, so let me show you actually how to brick stitch, okay? We could look at these beads all day, but we're not getting any further to teaching you how to do this earring. So let's do some brick stitch. And, um, oh, here are my other loops. Here they are, I put them all the way over there. Let me put those in there, Miranda one. These gold ones in here. I'm putting everything away nicely so my table doesn't look like a nightmare. There we go. Okay. Maybe a little space here. <laughs> a little space, a little bit of breathing room. Okay. I also listed, you guys, so the thread, um, I, you can use a couple of different threads. You could use Kao or you could use Hana. Now, if you just want to buy one thread, I would recommend getting the Hana Pebble, okay? This Pebble um, is a really good kind of neutral for everything. So if you're getting a bunch of different colorways and you're like, oh, you know what? I don't want to buy all this flipping thread. Just get the Hana and Pebble. That's my go-to. That's what I, you know, on Kate's favorite that I have here, that's what I did this infinity stitch laddering with, is that Hana pebble, okay? So that's a great one. Um, the one that I'm actually gonna use in this project, uh, I use the dark purple in KO, but you know what? You could have anything you wanted here. You could have this be blue or pink or whatever. So it doesn't, the thread color is totally up to you. And I saw Cindy, um, ask, what about Fireline? Yeah, you bet, of course. Fireline will work, Nymo will work, Eslon will work, all of those things will work. We have a really, some really great um, Eslon, um, I think it's Superlon D that we carry in all of these different colors. That would also work. So uh, whatever, you choose the thread that you like, okay? All of those will deal. So I'm going to get back to Danielle's really generous and amazing handout that she did. And again, if you guys are not familiar with the bead table, our Facebook group, Danielle from the get go has been so generous with her instructions. She has made not only instructions like this, but full on instructions for her loomed pieces. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. And they're all there in the files section. So if you click on files, you click on the files, all the files will come up. All of the episode notes are in there. 
uh, a lot of these handouts that Danielle has done. Faye did so very generously her take on the West County Cuff. Those directions are in there. If you haven't been accepted into the Bead Table group, go ahead after the broadcast, jump on over. I let people in a couple of times a week because it's a super popular group and I go through and make sure that everybody is there for beads and not there for, I don't know, nefarious purposes, whatever. So it takes me a while to jury everybody in, but I, um, but it's a great place, super creative, really, really great. So Danielle stitched tassel earrings and so I t emailed her and I said, Danielle, this is my dream. You've done this and I really want to do these earrings. Can I share your handout um, as my inspiration? And she graciously um, said yes. So um, it's great. Um, she's super, super generous with it. So now she talks a little bit about what she used in particular for these earrings. Okay. And then she starts with the brick stitch. So I'm going to, I'm going to put this kind of to the side here so we can follow along just so you guys can see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the medium size hoop and I'm actually, you guys, going to use size 6 beads to do this with. What I have started with really in this earring are 8 dots, but I want it to be super big so you can see it, okay? So that's why I'm going with these 6 dots as just a kind of a, a, a tester for this. Now I've strung my needle, at least I think I've strung my needle, here it is, and I've actually used my HANA thread with this. Now the needle that I've used, I am a fan of using sharps. Now you can use size 10 beading needles, it's not a problem, um, but the sharps, where did the, where did the package go? I know it's here somewhere, here it is. The sharps are short little needles that I use a lot for hand sewing as well. So my mom will know sharps when we quilt or do things like that. I also use sharps a lot when I'm mending, things like this. It's a nice short needle that I can really manipulate well, especially if I'm going around corners and stuff like that. So I've used the sharps. You can use a size 10 regular beading needle, whatever it is that works for you. Okay. So um, I've just cut, I don't know, like a, like if I hold my arm out and I touch my, and I get my thread, I go from my nose to my outstretched arm. So that's like half a wingspan, I guess, plus maybe just a little bit more. And um, I've cut my thread, I've lightly waxed it, okay? And now I'm gonna attach it to my loop. So again, this is the medium loop. I'm gonna cut on, uh, go through here, and I'm gonna leave a generous two inch tail, maybe a little, um, a little bit more. So now I'm gonna tie the thread to the loop and I'm gonna do that with um, a, a double knot or a square knot, okay? So all I do is I essentially come in, it's like the first knot you use to tie your shoe, right? So there's that half hitch and I'm gonna come right around, do one more time, so it's a full square knot, okay? Just like that, and it's tied on. So now our beads are ready to go. Now, when you start a new row, you guys, we always start by putting on those two beads, okay? So I'm gonna, and this is the only time you do that, when you start the row. So I'm gonna begin the brick stitch by adding two seed beads. In this case, these are size sixes. So I'm gonna take these two, and I'm gonna go around the component. See, here's the component here. Here's my needle. I'm gonna go from the back to the front, coming through, tighten everything up, just like this, okay? So that my beads are kind of sitting here on top, okay? Now, I'm going to come through, and that just kind of anchors everything. Now, I'm going to lay these two beads on the top like that, 
kind of how they're going to eventually sit. And this is the fiddly part a little bit. But see, now my thread is behind again. I always come from the back to the front. Okay, so I'm going to go one more time, come around, just like that. Can you see how my thread's coming out here? Now I've got to tame these beads, okay? I've got, now I'm gonna start to actually do the stitch. So this first bead I'm ignoring and I come up through the second bead, okay? And I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna tighten it up and then I'll move my finger so you can see what I've done. Now, let me get my little pointer. So here's the first bead I put on. Here's my second bead. I put my, my beads on. I went through just to um, kind of secure everything on the loop. Then I went from back to front and I came up through bead number two. And see how my thread is coming out through bead number two? There we go. So now I'm all set up, okay? So now, I'm going to get another bead, okay? I'm going to string my, my bead on my needle, come back through the hoop. Now see how this bead, it's kind of, you know, it's loose, right? Can you see how that little bead is flipping up there? What you've got to do every time is you come up through the bead hole to secure it. Okay. Now I'm going to tighten everything. This bead out here is still kind of screwing around. So you can leave it because I'm going to capture it as I go around on this side. Or you could bring this tail up through the bead at this point if you wanted. But I'm just going to leave it. So now let's put on bead number four. All right, we're going to start really cooking with this. Threads coming up out of the bead. I come from the back to the front. The bead kind of pops in place there. If the bead comes through and it's like this and all funny, just take your bead to the back and kind of place it where it wants to go, right? Then from the front, up through the bead hole and out, okay? Tighten everything up. We just want our tension to be consistent. We don't really need um, it to be, you know, throttle tight but we want it to be, you know, firm around your loop. So again, I'm gonna pick up a bead, come from the back to the front, and then come up through the bead hole. Now I'm gonna keep going pretty fast here. You guys on the chat in both the, um, uh, on the Facebook chat, um, and maybe earlier on the YouTube chat as well. We're talking about Emily's Seed Bead School, her Brick Stitch um, Seed Bead School, which is super helpful. You know, Emily, I'm gonna give you a little preview. Emily's coming back next week for Seed Bead School. We're gonna continue with some herringbone stitch next week. You guys are going to just love her project. I love her project. Um, and I can't wait to herringbone it up with her. So see, look at how these size sixes are going so fast. And look at how cool even these sixes look nice around this hoop. Now, you guys, the way that I teach my metalworking classes, and you're going, what the heck does seed bead have to do with metalworking? The way I teach my metalworking classes is I have you practice your soldering skills on some little scrap, what I call sampler tiles, right? So you're not horrified about, oh my gosh, I'm gonna screw up. Oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing. You're just learning the technique. So if you're just coming right out of the gate and you have not done this, um, uh, this stitch before, do a uh, a sample, right? Grab a ring. You know what? You could even grab a washer 
out of your your um, I don't know your toolbox or whatever right and I know you've got some six aught seed beads I know you do right um, and so I'm doing that here in the sample this row that I'm stitching this is actually done with size eights instead of sixes but I'm going up a size so you guys can actually see these okay so that's why I'm using the six because those size eights and you'll see you guys when I switch to the eights you're gonna go like wait a minute what what happened that's really small okay so I'm gonna do this we're almost done and so from the back to the front see how I'm keeping my finger my finger of my left hand I'm right-handed so I'm stitching with my dominant hand and my left hand is really controlling my hoop okay stitch that through we're almost there so when you come around you have to make a decision here to see what how many beads are gonna fit okay and I'm gonna say I can fit about one bead because what I did let me show you on this you can see this row inside here I have one too many beads in here it's a little see how it doesn't lay quite right can you see that it's not it should be one bead less you can't really tell but I know that I did one too many but that's just you know you learn um, kind of the ins and outs of the stitch so you'll do better next time I'll do better next time on my second one okay so I'm gonna come through yeah Ginger's saying she has washers I know that you have washers you can do this right after we get off the air and then when your materials come in you'll be ready to jump in okay so what happens here right I want to close this row up so I'm gonna come down and see how see how I've made little bridges Let me take this out of my hand so you can kind of see it I've made little bridges all the way around as I stitch up the bead and come back down right I come from the back I come up I've made another bridge come back from behind and up so this last little section I have to make a bridge okay so I'm gonna come in and I'm simply going to make the bridge from this bead to that bead come from behind so that's my first bead that I put on and I'm gonna stitch back up that first bead okay there we go and that's all she wrote now what you can do is and see there's a little bit see there's a little bit of space there so I just kind of play around with the tension a little bit as your beads go out that little extra like 1 32nd of a bit is not really going to show at all this extra tail that I had earlier what I can do is I can come around and I can I can do a couple of things with it I'm gonna put a needle on the other end here if I can get it out of the sharps box I'm gonna put a needle on the other end and I'm gonna take care of this end a little bit now I'm gonna come up through that bead and this thread is so thin that you're not going to really notice so I'm going to go down through the bead next to it I'm going away from where I'm going to be going over here just move up just a little bit you there we go yeah, and I'm going to come back so I'm just kind of reverse weaving this thread back through I could also tie a little knot or something but I kind of want that to be out of my way for the time being and then I'll go ahead and weave that in a little bit later as well so now for our second row you guys what we're gonna do and you can see here I'm gonna show you in Danielle's wonderful instructions and again we'll have these attached to our episode notes as well we're coming up with our second row right we're gonna thread two seed beads on bring my needle back and under instead of going underneath this component we're gonna go under that little thread bridge okay so let me show you 
All right. So instead of this time using 11 knots like I did for the second row here, I'm going to use 8 knots so they're a little bit bigger so you guys can see what's going on. Okay. So let me get myself some 8 knots here. Two 8 knots, one and two. Now I put them on, so let me slide them on. Slide these bad boys on. Oops. Well, there's a little knot in there, but these holes are big, so we'll be all right. So now I'm going to come up from behind and through, see that? Through that thread bridge. Okay? Through the thread bridge. Now I pull everything up. Now what do I do, everybody? See how they're already sitting like you kind of want them to. There was bead number one right here. Here's bead number two. What do I do, you guys? Go up through bead number two. That's right. I can hear Brando when she's home. Go up through bead number two. I always try not to. <laughs> so there it is. Up through bead number two. See that? And your thread is captured on this row just like it was around the component. Now it's just going around that thread bridge. Okay? So it's the same thing. That's all that brick stitch is. So see how that's sitting nicely? Now, how many beads do I put on now? I just put on two. It's the only time I put on two, right? So now I just put on singles, like I did before. One size eight. Now I go under the thread bridge, right? From back to front. See how the little bead, it's kicking up there, so I've got to tell it, stop kicking. So I'm going to go up through the bead hole. And see how it's loose there, but that's all right. We're going to close it up. Now, look what happened here. I want to show you this, and I did this mostly purposefully so you could see what's happening here, because you kind of have to test it. As you're coming around, see here, there's a little bit of space in between, okay? So we need to decide, since these beads are a different size and we're kind of graduating down with the bead size, we need to decide where under the thread bridge you're going to add this bead. I actually think that this little bit of space here is okay. And when I bring my next thread behind and up, it's actually going to come up, see, in this space. I'm not going to jump over to the next thread bridge. So it looks like I pass through this thread bridge twice, one with one bead and then one with a second bead. Sometimes you only pass through once. Let me get this one over here, especially with these 11 knots. You can see, and it's a little hard to see here, but this bead that's right here, I actually, yeah, no, it looks okay. With a smaller 11 knot, if I had put the 11 knot under the thread bridge over here, it felt a little crowded. If I went all the way to this one over here, it left too big of a gap. So you kind of have to um, play around with it a little bit and see how it works, okay? I'm gonna do a couple and then I'm gonna intentionally make a gap and show you what that looks like, okay? So I'm gonna put on another, another thread, another bead rather. I'm gonna go through that same thread bridge from the back to the front, tighten it up, and see now, see how that bead, that next bead kind of makes everything fill, uh, sit in together nicely. So I go up through the bead, all right. Let me put another bead on through the thread bridge and up. And Ginger's saying exactly right. It depends on your bead, how big the bead is, and how far away the next bridge is, right? So here we are. Now, let me put one on. If I'm going and let me say, oh, you know what? Let me come all the way over here and see what that looks like. And then I stitch it closed over here and I go, oh, yeah, no, that's left me a giant gap, okay? If it looks like this, you gotta take it out, okay? 
So I'm going to take my needle off. Don't try and needle back through. Just don't. Just, you know what? Don't. Do not. Because you're going to split this thread. You just are. If you don't have an awl, just get one. Or use, or use like a big darning needle or something. But this awl is super helpful to help me pick this stitch out. So I'm just going to kind of tug on the bridge a little bit, push that bead up, open up, if I can see it, open up that loop that goes around the thread bridge. There it is. Now I can take it out. Okay, And I don't have to take the bead off the thread. I just have to take the bridge, uh, the thread out from under that bridge, and I'm going to stitch it under those bridges, under that bridge there. Okay. <clears throat> so here we go. I'm going to re-wax the tip of this thread to make it easier for me to um, thread here with my needle. I'm going to bring it just under my thumbnail. I'm going to put the eye of the needle on that thread. I'm needling the thread, not threading the needle. Let me get that a little more waxed and clip it across so it's nice and across there. The good thing about this video, you guys, and I know some of you are worrying, what about the handout? Well, the handout is in our files section. It'll also be on the episode notes that you guys will see. Um, but you can also, this video is archived in a bunch of different places. It's archived in our, um, on our Facebook page um, here um, on our beadshop.com Facebook page. It's archived on our YouTube channel, right? And it's also archived on our website as well under the project. We'll have the video embedded in it, okay? So now you can see that looks a lot better, right? So I just had to not jump so far ahead. I had to come back and needle underneath that other bridge. So each one of these bridges has two passes, one and two. Okay. And again, this one. And, you know, again, I know how many passes. That had one, so let me put another one there. I know that stitching sometime can, sometimes can seem daunting if you have not had a lot of stitching um, prod, um, experience. You know, I stitched things and made things at a very early age, um, embroidery and hand sewing and stuff like that. So I have really good tension control and thread control because I make it look easy. But that's the secret, you guys, is controlling not having, you know, a boatload of thread and, um, you know, really holding this piece nice and stationary in your non-dominant hand and continuing each time that you make that stitch to stop a minute, fix the thread, fix the tension, and then go up through the hole. Okay, sloppy thread management will give you a, just a project that doesn't look great. Uh, how many did I go under? See, I was chatting, so I don't know. There we go. I can put another one right there. There we go. So as we come around, you can see, see how my piece is starting to come together. Okay? Just like that. All right? And again, just that, just, you kind of have to see it through. I know at the very beginning it seems super wonky. And if you guys do a practice run, right, of this, then don't don't even worry about going back and fixing your mistakes, right? At the beginning, it might look a little wobbly, but as you get a little bit further um, in your piece, things will start to stabilize. So if you do that practice run with your washer, or even do a practice run when you get your um, when you get your pieces in, um, you'll be in good shape. Okay. My needle came off the thread, so that must mean it's time to move to the actual project one. So here, if, if I don't have a huge tangle of thread, which of course I do, but that's all right. I'm going to get my trusty awl. I'm not going to freak out about all of these threads here together. 
Who's the boss of these threads, everybody? That's right. That's me. And let's do put that there. There we go. So can you see how where I've done my beginning it's unruly threads? There we go. I've done my first round here with my 11 knots, right? Or with my 8 knots, rather, sorry. And I've done my second round with my 11s. Notice how I've left a gap there, all right? And this, I loved the way Danielle did this. I know that some of you don't love a wire guard, but I do. So I bought into it hook, line, and sinker. Where's the finish earring? Oh, it's right in front of me, Brandwin. Jeez Louise. All right. See how that wire guard is what I'm using to hold my ear wire in? So this is the time that we stitch the wire guard in place. Okay? So we're just going to stitch it. I'm going to get my KO. In this case, I'm using KO. And the one that was earlier, I used the pebble, in uh, the Hana in pebble. So now I'm just going to come in. And I'm going to, and this was the last bead. This was the first bead I put on. This is the last bead. I'm going to stitch up through this wire guard. At least I think I'm going to stitch up through that wire guard. There we go. Down through this bead, down through bead number one. And see how I'm also going to go down because my needle, that's where my needle wants to go. So I've come up through the wire guard, whoops, good thing I looked at it, through the other leg of the wire guard. This is a lot easier doing this at home on my, in my chair. There we go. And now back through the first bead I put on and the bead below it. And see how that sits perfectly. Now there's just one little loop of thread in that wire guard, okay? That's not gonna that's not gonna cut it. So I'm just gonna simply weave back through, say I've passed my needle back. I'm gonna weave back up that same bead. These hole sizes are really generous. Okay, back through those two beads I just wove around. Back up through the leg of that wire guard. Around. And back down through the two on the other side. If your hands don't want to pull this needle, like my hands don't want to pull this needle at all right now, I'm going to use my bent chain nose plier. See how much easier that is than fighting with it. Make sure, see how that thread didn't catch in the little top of the horseshoe? Make sure that thread catches. It's in place. Come on now. It's in place. There we go, and I pull it down. Okay, I'm going to go around the back. And I could do this three times, maybe, but in the interest of time. I'm not gonna. And I'm gonna come up and come out that bead right there. This tail, it is now time to get rid of it because it is making me nuts. Uh, Charlene's asking, what would you do without a wire guard? Charlene, I could just string a little loop of beads on so it was that same wire guard shape if I wanted, right? And then I could have that loop just kind of open there, and I'd put my ear wire on it. I could also stitch in a small jump ring, like um, we have a four millimeter oval jump ring <clears throat> that would work really nicely. Okay, so it just depends on what uh, what you want to do, you know. But that little loop would be good. And see how here I'm just gonna come in with that tail. And I'm going to go up and down. I'm going to go through that 11, through that 8. And I'm just going to re-weave this sucker back up just a little. 
to get it right in there. And your thread path, you guys, is pretty invisible, okay? So don't stress about it. Just make a thread path, make it work for you. I could even jump over. See, I don't have to even go around the ring if I didn't want to. I could just jump over to the next bead and pull it up like this, okay? That's not gonna show at all. I'm gonna drop it back down through this 11 knot, maybe up through this 11 knot, next to it. I don't know, I'm weaving pretty far. Emily would say that I'm overdoing it with my weaving. So maybe I'll listen to Emily's voice in my head and stop right here. <clears throat> I'm gonna get rid of that thread. I could clip it, but you know, oh, there's some beads in my thread burner. I'm just gonna come in, use my thread burner really carefully and burn that thread away. It takes a moment sometimes for this uh, the cauterizer tip to heat up, but just uh, push, wait a moment, and then pull. It's not an instantaneous heat on this thing. Uh, the more that you um, just push down, wait for it, and then pull, it'll work perfectly. Okay, so now that's done. So that pesky thread is away from me. And I know that you guys have been asking about putting the ring on the inside. So I'm going to show you that in a second too. Okay, but let me show you this last, <clears throat> this last row. So can you see here now with the third row that I've put on, there we go, this one, how I've mixed an 11 knot and a three millimeter, okay? So I used the um, Smoky Amethyst AB and I used my friend the three millimeter um, fire polish. Okay, so um, you just do the same thing, right? So the first bead you put on is a fire poly, is a, right, because it's the beginning of our third row, we put on two beads. One's an 11, one's a three millimeter. I put them on, and I'm going to put it under this leg because I know that that three millimeter fire polish is kind of big. So there it goes, and I'm gonna come back up and through that fire polish. It's the same thing, you guys. I'm just using different beads. Ta-da! But this to start, you only used one instead of the two. No, I used two. Oh, you did. So oh. I put two on. I yep. missed it. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> so see, I come up, and see how that 11 knot, it's sitting a little wonky, but that's okay. As I come around, I can weave yes. my extra thread and I can close it up there or make it look uh, nice and um, uh, nice and clean. So now, instead of two, right, because I've already put on my two, I'm going to put on my single. And that single is an 11, and it looks like it wants to go under that thread bridge. There we go. And pass up. So this makes like a little dagged edge, right? little kind of zigzag edge to it under the bridge. And the bridge on these 11 knots, you guys, is a little smaller because it's an 11 knot, right? The, uh, the row before it. So the bridge is a lot closer. So I'm not, you know, putting, I'm not skipping any rows this time uh, or not stitching in any, under any bridges twice. Whoops. I'm glad I, did I make that? Yep. So see what I did here? And this is a mistake that I do all the time. I was just waiting for me to do it. See how I've come in and I've stitched and I'm like, wait a minute, this isn't right. And that thread looks funny. And how come the thread is coming up from the bottom of the bead here? What I do is, got to take off my needle. What I didn't do and I missed, I missed bringing this thread up through that 11 knot, okay? So if something is funny, and I do this, I do this probably once a row, I forget, okay? And so you'll notice, you might have to pick out a couple of beads, but you'll realize, oh, wait a minute, that's not sitting right, because your thread has to be in the right position. See now, the thread is coming up and out of that 11 knot. So get that three, 
under the bridge, up through the bead. I'm going to go a little bit, I'm going to try and go a little bit quicker because I want to get a little more of this done here. Let me open that up. <clears throat> Let's see if I'm going quicker. More quickly, what do I do? I kind of screw it up. So hang on a second here. I've got a twist. Untwist it, please. There we go. Done. Don't freak out. Don't let your, your, you know, your heart stop, right? Just kind of pick it out. So, and I go back up through the 11 knot. So we only do, when we put on the bead, we put on the bead from back to front, under the bridge, and then back up through the same bead. All right, the bead you just put on. That's exactly right, Carol. So under the bridge, back up through that same bead, and done. Add a bead, under the bridge, back up through that same bead, and you're complete. Bead, under the bridge, back up through that same bead and pull it all the way through. Done. Okay, and so you can see this edge, what I struggled with with this design. Okay, I, I'm serious. I tore that, this floor earring, I tore it apart. I don't, couldn't tell you how many times I tore it apart, right? I was just, um, having some issues there. And so I couldn't decide if I just wanted to keep going with this edge. And so I added more beads. I did all kinds of stuff. And I really felt like this bead, this edge with the three millimeter counterbalanced with the 11 knot really did a nice, um, a nice edge. So I just kept it that way, okay? I want to get to about the middle, and then I'm going to stop on this one here. So just bear with me here just a second. And on our project page, you'll be able to see um, the earrings all laid out nicely. Um, and you'll also see those in the episode notes. See, I'm getting, I'm also getting a little short on thread, which makes me uncomfortable, right? I don't like to stitch with a tiny little piece of thread. So let me stop and assess. I'm really close, so let me see. Uh, two, four, six, eight, nine, two, four, six, eight. So one more there. You know, stitching, even probably on these two earrings, my bead counts actually might be off because stitching is kind of arbitrary a little bit, right? So we just want to make sure um, that we're close, that visually it looks balanced, and then back through, okay? So, <clears throat> so I'm here, okay? And I'm here. So now, can you see what I did in this piece, the way I made it? was I made this piece complete, okay? Now I want you to see what I have here. One, two, three, four, five beads. So there's that one, one. And what I'm gonna do next is put on one, two, three, four, five, 11 knots. Okay, because those 11 knots, I need a place to attach my ring at the bottom. Now, if you don't want this bottom, if you just want to do a hoop, then just continue in pattern. Don't make this little kind of short or shorty row right here, okay? Or you can keep that shorty row and just make a... Um, stitch a briolette in, okay? So you could do that earring as well, okay? So 
we don't have to worry. I'm going to stitch these five little beads in. I want to get across and create that bridge. And then I'm going to show you how to do the interior here. But I want to get to the bead. I think I have enough to stitch these 11 knots in, enough of this thread. Um, and I'll show you how I add thread in, because I'm going to have to, to complete this, um, this round. So see, up through the bead, under the bridge, up just a little bit, and then back up through that bead hole. Pick up a bead, under the bridge, and back up. Okay, so now I'm ready to add my third, or my, my three millimeter fire polish. Okay, and at this point, you guys, I am, I've got a, I have to get rid of this thread. Okay, so I'm done with my thread here. Now, what Emily likes to do when she um, weaves off is, see, I'm going to weave off there, and I'm going to come back here. I just want to bury my thread in my stitching. And I know when I bring my, when I add a thread back on, I'm going to start back here, weave it up, and I'm going to come out that bead here. Everybody makes like such a big deal about adding thread and taking thread away. Just everybody relax. See, I'm using that bent chain because my fingers don't want to grab. So I'm just going to do this, pop up, and just, it's okay, just stitch where you want it. The thread is just going to hide. And again, the thread is thin, the bead holes are large and generous. So, and I'm going to kind of go back into a square. I'm going to come back down here, pull it through. I'm going to pop it up through, and I'm going to come out of this A dot. And I think that's a good place to burn the thread off. So I'm just gonna, and I'm not even gonna leave my thread there because I know I need to cut, weave my thread from back here and come up out of that one. So, but some of you may wanna just leave this thread until you weave your new one on. Hit your thing and there it's done, okay? This one, this one came out a little bit so I'm gonna thread burn that one down too. There we go. Alrighty. All right. So now I could, if I were doing this in real life and not demo time, though honestly, the way that I did this one, I did two rows, the eight aughts and the 11 aughts. Then I added the interior row. Okay. Because I was like, oh, I want to see what it looks like. So you can do this in any order. I would do establish at least a couple of rows out here before you add your interior row, okay? I'm gonna start adding my interior row. I'm not even done with this side here, right? But that's okay, doesn't matter. I also established this um, section down here so I can show you how I'm gonna connect those two as well. So I'm gonna probably connect this before I do any of the stitching down here. I can do that too. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter um, as long as you have the space to add your pieces, okay? So let me show you the interior. I'm gonna set this aside. The interior, it's like we're starting a clean slate all over again. Um, I'm gonna do it on this one here since this one's complete. Um, I guess, I don't know why I need to do it on that one. I'll do it on this one, it doesn't make any difference. So I, <clears throat> I chose the two millimeter hematite, okay? Because, um, I don't know, I like the way they look, the hematite cut cubes. I thought they were pretty. Um, but you could use, you could repeat your A dot around the interior. You could repeat a smaller row of 11 knots. Doesn't matter, whatever whatever floats your boat. I wanted a little flash, what a surprise. So I did the, um, the hematite. And can you see how I repeated with that hematite on those guys there as well? Uh, my snips, okay. 
and I'm just going to come in and you guys it's no different I'm ignoring all of the beadwork that's coming out and I'm just going to focus on beadwork going in now I could start this at any point because the hematite row is um, you know you're just going to close it up so it doesn't really matter but I'm going to start it up here at the top just for consistency I'm going to bring my thread through like I did from before but I'm working on the inside instead of the outside I've got about a two inch tail tie my half hitch another half inch hitch so it's a square knot put on two beads one two come around I need to go through that loop there we go now I come around from the back of the loop and my needle comes up through those eight dots can you see that in between there those hematites are just going the other way and what do I do you guys that was bead number one this is bead number two I come up through bead number two if I can see it there we go all right so now you just have to think a little bit you have to alter your spatial thinking a little bit you were going out but now you're coming up here okay and then so I'm gonna come in I'm gonna add one bead so your mantra is the same add a bead and what I what you can also do is you can go I like to actually put my needle through because I know that I'm coming from back to front so I'm but you could also go from front to back on this one right so I come through comes on and I just stitch through that bead I'll get my hand out of the way in a second Kind of hard for me to see at that angle but there you go up okay so I put my needle through the loop grab a bead I come up between and aim in between each a dot okay that's probably a good way to look at it get your finger there get that cube in place stitch up and through the cube um you know, Lynn, that's a great question. Would it be easier to make the inner row prior to putting the outer row on? Maybe, though I like this first established a dot row because that I just keep going in between each of these a dots as I go, right? So it gives me, um, it helps me space things out. But you could, you could do the inner row first and then do the subsequent rows uh, above it. I don't think it makes any difference. This brick stitch, you guys, is so easy. It really is, right? So we just come up from the back. My bead is there. And I come up through the bead. So it's the same mantra stick my thread through and if let's take a look and see what it looks like see how I had a little bit of space there oh I had space there because I missed that a dot that's so I knew that was wrong I'm gonna pick this out it's okay get your trusty all take the needle off just pick out the thread right and yet yeah, you can you can stitch the inner row from front to back and the outer rows from back to front but I'm passing my needle through and coming up from the back just so it's also a little bit easier for you guys to see but as long as you're consistent it doesn't make any difference there we go let me put this on and you know 
If the inner row is, you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get that, then just do the outer rows. Don't put an inner row in. It's okay. Right? It's all right. And I'm going to come here, and then I'm going to come up. There we go. Okay. So I go through. And Danielle made a good observation. She says, I feel like the cubes might sit closer to the loop, the hoop, and it might be tougher to get the needle in between them when you do this outer row. And I think she's actually probably right on that one, right? Because, um, uh, because this cube does sit very close to the hoop. Okay, so I might do my outer row, have at least one outer row established like this, then you could do the inside row if you wanted. The inside row, I can't see the holes. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. I like that. Yes, yeah, Cindy Brooke is like, I must have the inner row. That's all. That's all there is to it. Well, I don't blame you. I had to go extra, right? I had to do it, right? Which is funny. It's so funny. Uh, I don't know how I stitched that, but that is wrong, wrong, wrong. See, I didn't pass my needle through. I just went around the piece. I was not paying attention. I was looking at comments. Let me take that out. Um, <clears throat> So yes, and someone asked, is the bridge now the hoop on this inner row? That's exactly right. The bridge is the hoop. For your first rows, either inner or outer, the hoop is the bridge. And as you work out, it's the thread coming in between the beads that is the bridge, okay? Pass the needle to the back, pick up the bead, go from back to front, stitch, place that bead inside, and continue it around. Okay. I'm going to just do a couple more, and then we're going to go to the small loop. Okay. And I think it wants to go here and here. So let's look at that small one. Push this aside. Okay. Again, we're going to go a little bit long today, but I don't want to cheat you out of any of your learning. So, um, so stick with me, right? So hang, hang, hang tight. If you can. If not, watch it on replay. Whatever. So here's that, right? So in real time. I would stitch that all the way around, right? And I'd have that stitched all the way around there. So I'm going to put that aside for the moment, okay? So here I'm getting to my small loop, all right? And someone asked, uh, what is the smallest hoop I would use if you just wanted to make the small earring? I'd use this mini hoop. I think that the mini hoop the size is, I'll tell you, it probably says in our description, but the outer diameter of this bad boy is 12, mil, uh, 12 millimeters. Okay. Don't worry, I'll get to the briolette. I won't leave you hanging, Ma. My mom's all, what about the briolette? Ma, chill. I promise I'll get to the briolette. Don't worry. My mom just wants to make sure that this, that this is the best tutorial it can be. She just likes the bling. She does. I know where you get it from. <laughs> I like it too. We like shiny things. We always did. You know, when I was a little girl, my grand had this vintage rhinestone collection, of which I still have. And I know that my mom, as a kid, played with those same rhinestone necklaces, though perhaps they weren't quite as vintage <laughs> then. Um, but, you know, so I was raised on it. I was raised on a little bit of shine. So I'm just going to stitch. This smaller one, right, is just the same as the big one. I need some more 11 knots here. 
Okay. Grab your bead from behind through the thread bridge and up. Okay, and you can, Yvette, you can do this brick stitch. Honestly, I am not a very proficient seed beater. I mean, I know my seed bead stitches for sure, but this one is so easy that you, of course, can do it. And you know what? If you have to start and stop several times, who cares, right? It's practice. Practice makes perfect, okay? I have a little... Uh, Karen's posting a new um, editorial on our homepage about my thoughts about practicing. Um, and if it's not up yet, it'll be up shortly. So here, this is again where I end, right? So this is coming up. I'm going to go from behind. I'm going to get that 11 knot. And see here, eh, that's a little, can you see how that's a little tight? That's, that's too many, one, one too many. So I'm going to take that out and it just needs to close right there. The gap looks like it's huge, but when I stitch it closed, I think everything will stitch up nicely. So bear with me here just a second. I'm gonna close it up. Okay, so I'm gonna come down. I need to complete that bridge, so I'm gonna come down, and I think I'll come down through the 11 knot, I mean the eight knot that's below it. There we go. See that? That closes it up really nicely. All right. And now I'm just going to I'm going to come in and maybe go to the one next to it. Now that this is a circle, it doesn't really matter where I start and stop with this one. But what I do want to do is I got to get rid of this of this thread here. So weave in your tails. You know, those of you who are knitters, and I'm a knitter, I love to knit. We were talking about being a fast beater or a slow beater. I am the world's slowest knitter. I actually have had a sweater on the needles like, I don't know, seven years or something. I don't know, whatever. But um, I am very much a process knitter, not a project knitter. So I, as I go, especially with this sweater, I weave in the tails, right? You gotta weave in the tails or else um, you'll just, at the end, have all of the tails sitting there and it's super daunting, right? So weave in as you go. Janice Kang, I can see your yarn ball right there. I bet Janice Kang is a um, stitch in as you go. Janice Kang, would you do me a favor? I'm going to ask you a favor because I know you're on the bead table group and it has nothing to do with beads, but you know what I'm going to ask. Janice Kang knitted the most incredible scarf. The pattern, if I'm not mistaken, is called 52 Pickup. Ooh. And it's a scarf that's knitted, it's double knitted and you knit all 52 playing cards in it. And it's double, it's, it's incredible. So if you would um, humor me, Janice K, and post it in the group, I know it's knitting and not beating, but I think everyone would love to see it, especially those of you who play cards like my mom, who's a great bridge, bridge player. I'm sure we have bridge players in this group. I love to play cards, a little cribbage. Or privilege players. I'm sure you guys will love it. So I've gotten rid of that one, okay? And so here's this, and here's this, okay? Now let's pretend, you guys, visualize with me, pretend with me, that this is all finished up here, right? And I may have gone around maybe and done this row, maybe. Let me add just a couple, okay? Oh, great, thank you, Janice. And you know what, I'll have uh, Drea link it in the notes just for fun. So those of you who are not on the bead table and watch it later, you're like, what the heck, I wanna see it. It's really, it took you, I believe Janice K, a whole year um, 
to knit it, I believe. It was so great. We had dinner. It's a whole backstory to this. And I saw the piece. I was just, it was so incredible to actually see the piece in person. One card a week. <laughs> One card a week. That's all we ask. Um, so the way that I did this is I came in, and I think this is how I did it. I came in and I connected. Now, can you see, I wanna show you here, it's gonna be kind of hard for you to see, but I wanna isolate these rows. See how this row and this row, see how they look the same, right? Here's the second row. Can you see that there are also, there are five beads here. One, two, three, four, five. I had to match it with five beads below it to connect. Can you see that? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So those five beads here and here are what I use to connect. So let me show you that. Just go with me here. You know what I'm going to do? I This thread is driving me crazy. I'm just going to cut it away, and then I'll deal with all of this stuff later. Okay. I know I haven't woven it in. I know, but it's bugging me. So, so I line these up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. So that's kind of my line there. All right. So now all I do is I'm going to build a little bridge from here to here using a series of five beads, three 11 knots, and two hematite cubes. Okay. This could just be 11 knots all the way across if I wanted it. But see how I, just like I did up here when I um, did the three millimeter contrasted with the 11 knot here, I did the same thing here except I contrasted the 11 knot, I switched them out, 11 knot hematite cube, 11 knot hematite cube, okay? So I just, I wanted to continue that look around. And Carol asked if you would feel secure if it was connected with three beads instead of five. Uh, sure, I would feel secure. Sure, as long as it's stitched nice and tightly. I wanted a little bit of a wider connection, but if you want your connection to be a little slimmer, I don't say I don't see why not. It would work. Okay. So see here, I'm this bead is coming out of. I'm going to call this the thread's coming out of bead number five, or bead number one. I'll call it. And it's going to go into bead number one over here. And I put a bead on the needle. So out of one, bead on, and up out of bead number one here. Okay? And connect. Now I need to come down through bead number two. Bead number two is right next to bead number one. Right. Now I'm going to put on, I've laid these out, so it's time for a hematite cube and go down through bead number two. I had to pull this section out when I was designing it. I think I pulled this section out like four times. so. So it should be an odd number, okay? So now I come up through bead number three, this 11 knot. Put on an 11 knot, that's bead number three. And up through bead number three on the loop. Okay. There's two more beads to go down through bead number four. What what bead is bead number four, you guys? That's right, it's a hematite cube. Okay, 
I'm keeping my tension. Bead number four and down through bead number four. Okay. And now for my final triumph, up through bead number five. Is it Charlene saying it's like ladder stitch? Like a ladder stitch. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. I don't really know how to do ladder stitch, but I guess I do. I guess I do now. And I come up through bead number five. Okay. Now you're like, well, Kate, what are you going to do? Whoops, my needle came off. That's okay. How the heck? See, your thread's all the way up here. What do, you, what do you do now? Well, you don't stress. Put your needle back on. I put my needle back on, she said. There we go. Come on. There we go. Nope. Put your thread back on. Right. Let me, let me wax it. It's all right. All right. Janice is saying, what about a wire guardian for each hoop, then a jump ring connecting them so it swings? Sure, that works too. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, those are the ones Janice will make. Whatever works. These are all just techniques and ideas for you guys to springboard off of, right? So you, you go for it. All of those suggestions are sound. So now I'm just going to come back through and I'm going to weave my needle till I get to the part where I want to add. I'm going to come here where I want to add a bead. Okay. I'm going to go there. Whoops. There we go. See this end, these ends, what I would do if this weren't demo time, I would come back and reinforce that connection. Because see, these be, it's a little, uh, this is a weak point in the earring. So what I would do is I would come back and ladder back through. Um, and then my beads would actually also be on the same side but I'm gonna at least go through one here because this edge is a little, um, it's a little loose for my taste. Okay, just a little bit, thank you. Okay. Oh, my mom's telling me ladder stitch. Oh, right, when we sew up, oh, right, okay, yeah, I do, okay, I do know how to ladder stitch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, Ma. You learn what you know every day. I guess so, right? I've been sewing since I was a little girl, so I guess I don't know what things were called, though. Maybe that's it. So now my needle, if you can't get it through, use your bent chain to help you. So now I'm just going to come in. See, I was going before I was going clockwise. Now I'm going to go counterclockwise because this is where my needle ended up, right? So let me see if I can do this without screwing it up, right? I'm dancing backwards here. So uh, I'm going to put on my bead under the bridge. Whoops. Under, I said, under the bridge. There we go. And back up the bead. Okay. So pick up a bead. Oh, needs to be an 11 knot. Huh. Under the bridge. Back up. So, can you see how you can brick stitch in both directions? Are you seeing how that's possible? So that, um, whoops. Sorry, I stitched this incorrectly. So that you could build up brick stitch going back and forth 
You've seen Emily, there we go. You've seen Emily do that in her brick stitch earrings? How you go? And uh, someone asked, do you have to burn the thread after you've woven it back through? You don't. I just have the thread burner here. So I burnt it. Now, someone asked, Yvette asked, Yvette and I knew someone was gonna ask. You have a sharp eye, my friend. Why didn't I use two beads when I started right here, right? So I came through, I wove it off. If I had used two beads there, I may not have had enough room for that 11 knot to sit. So that's why I just made that choice not to add one. Though you could, there's some room here, but I could add an, an 11 knot and then have come through. But this is sitting just fine the way it is. So I decided it wasn't, um, yeah, and there's this thread bridge. That's exactly right also, Ellen. The thread bridge was there. Thread was already established, so I was ready to go. So that's exactly right. But I could have added two. So I'll put on the bead, come through, and back under the bridge. So the stitch, you guys, even if I'm going in the reverse direction, is how you just build this brick stitch up on itself. And I want to show you how I did that as I get to the bottom of this earring, okay, because I'm almost there. Thanks for hanging in there. You know, it's hard to do a stitching show on your own because you don't have a partner to stitch real fast to hand you uh, the, uh, the, other, the other piece. But Emily's going to be with me next week and we'll be stitching up a storm together. So it's going to be fun. Okay, so let me check. Let me put this down and let me see how this shapes up against the one that I've done here because I think I've already gone almost too far. This guy here and this guy here. So I've completed, I will complete this row all the way around. And then I'm gonna weave my thread back through and I'm just gonna add this little row. And so see the thread path? This is like the third row of this earring here. Okay, weave, weave, weave. Then I come in 11 knot, three millimeter, 11 knot, three millimeter, 11 knot, and then can you see, I've just put on, I've made a little loop like we were talking up at the top here. Two 11 knots, the briolette, two more 11 knots, and then I finished it off. What I did was before I went and finished it off this way, I came through, I wove through, and I went through that briolette twice. So I had a doubled thread, okay? So let me just, Oh, stick with me. I'm sorry. Again, I'm going a little long. I'm sorry I didn't have more steps prepared, but you guys are hanging in there with me. Okay. And here. Get that piece of thread out of the way. Sometimes these hematite cubes, the way that they're plated, they plate and stick together. Sometimes you can pry them apart, and sometimes you just have to move on to a new cube. Okay. So this um, pattern goes all the way around. See that one, how that one's stuck together. I'm gonna toss that one to the side. So I'm going to get to the edge of this pattern. This 11 knot under the bridge. Up through the 11 knot and over. And let me get some more of these. And again, with the episode notes, you guys, if I just put the episode notes up, that uh, from last week, the ones from Longing uh, that we did Janice's piece. Uh, when you're watching this on replay, or if you've stumbled on this video on YouTube and you're like, oh my gosh, I wish there was a guide so I could just fast forward to the learning parts of these. 
Well, you know, Drea has you covered. She actually, in those episode notes, puts all of her timestamps down. So you can adjust the slider to whatever the minute marker is, and you can get to the next phase of the learning. Okay, so, um, so if you're like, oh my gosh, I just, I want to get to this next part, go to beadshop.com, go to the project, okay? Go to the project, hit the download episode notes button, download those guys, and you'll have all of the info you need, okay? Um, it'll be really, really helpful for you. There's a question here that says, does waxing your thread keep it from twisting up? I don't know, m maybe. Um, you're having issues, Carol, with your thread kind of twisting as you're working. Uh, it may, I don't know, it also maybe depends on the stitch, or maybe you're twisting your needle. Um, give it a go. Waxing certainly can't hurt, so see if it helps you. I'm coming down the home stretch of this one, okay? And then, so now it looks like I can add just one more cut cube, just there, back and up through the cube. Maybe, there it is. Now, I'm just going to weave this thread back on down. Weave it on down. I can go back through that 11 knot row if I feel like it. But I don't want to twist my thread. I start that, I go down one, two, three. So that was one. I'll skip over that one, put it in that one. Go down this one. Okay. And then up this one. Okay, looks good. So now, as I come out of this seed bead, right here, and can you see it right here? This is where I add, I'm, since I'm starting a new row, I add my two beads, okay? So, and this will kind of make it centered. Again, I ripped this out a whole bunch, so I go down one, two, three, and that's where I start that little extra row. So I put on this 11 knot, put on my three millimeter, Go under the thread bridge. There we go. And back up through that three mil. There we go. And I just, how many do I put? I put two of these sections on. One under the bridge, and you also kind of have to eyeball it to make sure that your center section is lining up. Whoops, what I didn't do, I put my bead on before I'm rushing here, before I went through that 11 knot. Okay, there we go. That up through the three, under the thread bridge, whoops, under the, hello under the thread bridge and up through the three mil. One last 11 knot and then we're going to put on that briolette because I know you've been waiting. The same, it's the exact same way you guys as I attach the briolette up top. I'll weave, weave, weave and I'll have the needle coming out here. It's the same thing, it's the exact same way I do it here. So I'm going to end With that briolette there, with that stitch there. So now I need to kind of ascertain what the middle is here, and where I'm gonna um, where I'm gonna start this pattern again. 
So I know I have three. One, two, three. So I'm going to count here. One, two, three. And I've got two that are kind of covered there. So my briolette needs to hang kind of here. On this one, my stitching tension, it looks like it was a little wider, maybe. I don't know. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. So this here, I'm going to put on two. I'm going to put on the briolette. We'll see what it looks like. And two. And I'm going to go back down. And come back in kind of the same place as the opposite end. There we go. So see how it looks. This one's hanging a little, a little lower, but it looks about the same, I think. And I'm going to come in, and so now I actually have an extra bead here that hasn't been stitched down. So I'm actually, it doesn't look quite right. I wanted to pull this out. What I didn't do. See how I put on that last brick stitched bead? But what didn't I do there, you guys? I didn't come up and back through the hole of the bead. This is turning out poor Brandwin. She's like, can we have lunch now? <laughs> these last two Facebook Lives have turned out to be these epic broadcasts. I'm epic sorry. Piece of, uh, it is. It's an epic piece of jewelry. So a, thanks, you, know, you guys, for... What is it? Gala worthy. Yeah, yeah Met, that's right. Met Gala, Met Gala worthy. worthy. So if we're going to wear it to the Met Gala, we're going to we're going to make sure that it's good, right? There we go. And now back around that bridge. There we go. See how much more even. Now I need to add my 11 knot Actually, I should have added that 11 knot because it needs to be stitched underneath there. And I know I'm breaking my own rule. I'm going back with a needle. Oof. All right. Back through. I know a lot of my European ladies are like, oh my god, it's time for bed. I'm going to bed. But you guys can watch it on the replay. There we go. OK. So there we go. So see how I did? I put that three. I've gone up, come up to maintain, to ascertain that brick stitch. See where my thread is coming out? Just like that, right? So now I'm ready to brick stitch again. So let me put my, my one on there, and I'm going to go under, I guess, that thread bridge. You kind of have to guess where it goes, right? And up. But visually, as long as it's balanced, it should be okay. Up through, whoops, up through and tighten. Yep, there we go. That looks even. Shoo, good thing. Then I'll talk you through the remainder of this. Let me just get these couple of beads stitched through. If I can get this bead. How many needles have I strung during this broadcast, right? There we go, bead under the bridge. back up through the bead hole and down one more under I'm going to put it looks like I've got a little bit of funny space there but let's see what that looks like under the bridge around and one last purple one and under. There we go. Now, I could, if I wanted a second row all the way around, I could have done a second row all the way around, right? And I think it looks like, if I'm looking at this, I might actually have added one too many beads here. I think I actually want one less bead, is what it looks like. 
but that's okay. You'll experiment. When you put this briolette on, um, you'll decide. I know it is tedious work, but I like tedious work. I like this little hand stitching here. I really do. So now I'm just going to come through, you guys, and I'm going to weave this thread off. That's it. That's all she wrote. Okay. Weave it, weave it off, just like so. Then what we need to do to finish this is I'm going to come in, and you can see I just took these guys off, but or when I cut them off, so I'm going to have to go back in and restitch these. But as I come around here, I'll complete this row, and then I'll just needle out and put those there. There we go. Right in the center is where that briolette's going to sit. So I figure out where that center is. I weave my thread through, come out from the bead hole, put on one seed bead through the briolette, one seed bead, and back up. Come back around, maybe go back through one more time, and then weave it out. That's it. Okay, that's it. Then I just come in and open this loop. Connect onto my wire guard. Whoops. Connect onto my wire guard and close it up. That's it. And then I'll come in, obviously, and I'll continue this brick stitch around here. But you can see, you, it, you know, whatevs, right? You can kind of build these in parts. You know, you'll have, now I have this one over here, right? And I could continue on, I could add my center. Let me just decide, you know, and you guys are saying, oh my gosh, you know, Yvette, you're saying this would have taken you two days. Well, this first one took me, I'm not kidding, about a week. Oh my God, it was, it was rough, but I persevered. And, and what a sense of accomplishment. Right, exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, you, you could use drops, we could, you know, design with the different tassels. I don't know, we have the little tassels here. Here they are, these guys here. So you could, even just this simple brick stitch one here, you guys, if you're like, oh my God, this earring is way too extra. You could just do a simple drop like that, right? And you could, um, you know, even put your, your hematite cubes along the outside of that, right? Like that. And then you could do just a simple briolette in the center, right? Simple. Simple. Looks good. You could also, if you wanted, hang it from a piece of chain, right? Or stitch in chain along the bottom. So you've got chain fringe. There's so much to do that with just this basic stitch, right? Chain, I think, would look really great, especially if you cut it so it kind of waterfalled down or tapered down on both sides, right? And you could wire wrap a little, I don't know, you could wire wrap a briolette to the center one and then have other dangles or something coming from it. So it's really, 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 really easy to kind of get lost in the variations of these, okay? And yeah, I'll put the earring on when we um, put the, when we go to the front, okay? So I, uh, let's move this sucker around. So that people can see how the earring looks. So that people can see how the earring looks. And I'll give you a little hint about what's going to happen on Friday on Facebook Live, on Free Tip Friday, rather. Okay, so you guys, I'm going to put the earring on so you can uh, see. I'm not even there yet, but okay. we're, we're getting there. Okay. There we uh, go. And now i got to make it big. So here, I'll put this on. So let me measure it first before I put it on. Where's my, where's my gauge here? We'll measure. Actually, I've got a tape measure right here. Um, the dangle itself from the top of the stitching part to the bottom of the briolette to 
Mm, it's about one, two, three, four, five. It's about two and five eighths of an inch, I think. So they're not that long. I don't know. I wear big earrings, so that's my that's my gig, right? But it's a good size, and, and you great. could also with just this one loop, right? you could make something that's a little shorter so whatever you could also put this into i mean wouldn't it be great as a component stitched in on the side of a piece that you're wearing too so you know whatever works for you go for it but i i i like this earring oh yeah i can see it i can see it in the screen i'm gonna wear this like all day now um so I have something really exciting for you on Friday. Um, I, um, let me see if I can get it off here. I have made, and this, this, you guys who have been watching for a while know about our curated kits or our curated mixes or boxes. I have a new one. When I went to Tucson in February, I did some shopping and we did some shopping for our curated mixes and our curated boxes. I have been waiting to share this with you guys since Tucson, since February. And this has gotten me, um, I am really excited. So those of you who know or who are familiar with this um, procedure, these kits, I've got a very a limited supply, not a very limited, but it's limited supply. They go in at midnight, Friday Pacific time. They go in at 12.01, they turn on. And on Friday's Free Tip Friday, I'm gonna to talk to you about how I strung this necklace. It's a long necklace that I've strung that has a statement on both ends that you can wear doubled like this, or like this, or like this, or long, or whatever. So I'm gonna share this style, this stringing style with you. If you want one of the kits, set, and well, you don't have to set your alarm, but check your newsletter on Friday morning. The link will be in there. And I'm really, really excited to share it with you. It's called uh, Tribal Journey, the Tribal Journey kit. And it has some really super special beads, beads that we don't carry here online. I'm gonna talk to you, this is an old, um, vintage uh, piece, this brass piece that you see on belts, which is really, uh, really old uh, tribal belts. That's what this is from. There's a couple of other tribal pieces on here that are old that are not uh, easily found anymore. So I'm really excited to share this with you. So mark your calendars for Friday. Um, grab the kit. Um, Janice really was very instrumental in helping me put this together as well. We did some of these when she was out, so uh, so it was really fun. So I'm going to share how I put this piece together. Um, and when the kit on Friday, when it's gone, it's gone. So I'm preparing you. So if you're watching this later and you're like, wait a minute, it's not May 1st, it's three months later or whatever, don't worry. We have curated mixes and curated boxes coming up. All, well, not all the time, but often, sometimes. So put yourself, go to beadshop.com, add yourself to our newsletter mailing list. Uh, it's right there on the front page. We keep all of your info private. We don't sell it or give it away. And that's how we communicate with you with special mixes like this, with giveaways, with, I don't know, whatever. We do all kinds of fun stuff. So that's our number one way to uh, connect with you. So you guys, uh, I guess, I guess that's it. I'm exhausted. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to see what you do with this mambo earring. I know I took this dancer earring and blew it up. It's true. Um, but again, I can't wait. So I am ready for the Met Gala. I'm, I don't know where my invitation is. They better <laughs> send it to me, right? I will see you guys on Friday for Free Tip Friday. We'll work on Tribal Journey. And next week on Wednesday, Emily's going to be sitting right here. Which side does she sit on? This side. Yeah, this side. Emily's going to be sitting right here next to me. I can't wait to see her, and I know that she can't wait to see you guys. Thanks for hanging in with this epic broadcast.
And oh, before I forget, I didn't even mention, I've got it right here. Just real quick, if you have opened your newsletters, you know that we did a component sale, um, that all of the components for these. Um, if you put Dancer 30 in your cart, the things, the components that are uh, used in this earring, seed beads, three millimeters, briolettes, these components, thread, it's all marked 30% off. It's good today and tomorrow, so you'll have plenty of time to plan your attack. If you want to see the other colorways, jump over to our bead table blog. They're listed there. All right, that's all I've got. Talk to you guys on Friday. Thanks so much.